Okay, let me introduce our guest speaker, the Right Honorable Judge Eddie Howard, who will speak on the Fatality Review Team, which is something I never heard of, but I'm interested in. <laughs> Can I give you anything more No, I, I, I'm not, I'm not giving anything. I don't know how many of you even are aware that there is a group of people that is uh, called the Child Fatality Review Team. There is, uh, back in 1995, uh, it was in March or April or so after I was elected, uh, I found out that there was this group entitled the Child Fatality Review Team, and they were looking for groups to come on board to uh, review child, child deaths from birth to through 17 years. And I was interested in that, and I, and I got all the information. Anyway, sent in an application to start that, and the lady sent me back one, and she said, that the Hope House group, they had also, on the same day, we, we had applications hit at the same time. And they said, hey, is there any way you guys want to work together? So uh, I thought, why would I try to do that myself when they have already got a good start? So they made the application, they got the uh, charter, got the grant, and we started from there. I became, at that point in time, the presiding officer, and I have been since, uh, since that time. We review anywhere from five to 12 deaths uh, about four times a year. And those deaths range, as you can imagine, in, in, uh, I mean, some of them are tragic, some of them are natural, and uh, we, we look at all of those deaths uh, from an interdisciplinary perspective. And our job is not to determine if somebody did something wrong. Our job is to determine whether that death might have been preventable. And so uh, the Concho Valley team, we have medical uh, folks. We have uh, uh, law enforcement folks. We have the Child Protective Services, San Angelo ISD, Hope House, Juvenile Probation, we have a pediatrician, uh, text dot, the district attorney's office, and then we have others as needed. When there's a death someplace that we need somebody or an expert to come in and talk to us about that death, and that person is brought in and we use uh, the information that they give us to try to determine again. And we've got a form, it's nearly, it's nearly this thick. It's not quite, but it's nearly this thick that you go down through to try to figure out whether that death was pre pre preventable or not. Who would you say in our community is the most vulnerable? There's two groups that I think of. Elderly, elderly, elderly and, and children. the young. That's old folks. The, yeah, yeah, that's old folks. The, uh, you know, the, the young, a lot of them can't talk. They can't tell you. They don't, they don't have the ability to express to you. And so looking at the deaths from this standpoint, it really gives you an opportunity to, to understand what took place. Uh, all deaths are looked at, whether natural or what we would consider unnatural deaths. 94% of the state is covered. There are 74 teams, and that represents 94% of the state, and all, each state, uh, each group at, in the state is made up basically the same way, we do the same things, and then those reports are sent on to, uh, back to the state for them to, uh, to compile the information, and then the state committee takes that information with information, or with stuff that we would present to them, and ideas we would give them, and then they make recommendations to the legislature and to, uh, other state organizations of what might could be done to help um, the state make life better. Well, does that work? In 2005, out of every 100,000 kids, 17 birth to 17 years, there were 65 
debt out of every 100,000. Today, and it's come up, it went to a low of about 52 deaths per 100,000. Now we're up to about 54 deaths for every 100,000. So there's been a dramatic decrease in the amount of deaths. Does it work? When we make a recommendation, one of the recommendations several years ago was we needed to teach people how to put a safety seat, a car seat, in a car. Yep. The state took on that project, various groups took on that project. Tech Doc now has a guy, he'd have to be a friend of mine, but he, they have a fellow, that's what he does. He's, he, he just travels around teaching people, and if you know somebody that needs a car seat, I mean literally, really needs a car seat, if you take them out there, they'll give you one, and they'll show you how to put it in, and they'll work with you on that deal. They have, that has dropped from up in the 10 per 100,000 down to the 8 per 100,000 in the last, since 2011. So the education does work. We had, a, we recognized from our group collects newspaper articles about child's deaths and, and sees what happened, you know, articles over on the internet. We recognized that there were deaths several years ago, not several years ago, 2012, that there were a lot of deaths of uh, kids who were pulling TVs off of the wall, pulling TVs off of the counters, the whole counter falling, the, the whole dresser falling on kids. So we collaborated with ASU, their audiovisual department, and they put together a, a, a TV ad for us, public service ad, and that TV ad has been planned. I just recently called because there's been a little spurge in that, in those deaths, and I just called and asked them, the TV stations, to play those uh, again. So they, they are doing that. Number one factor of death in the state of Texas for this age kids is motor vehicle deaths. Uh, and that is basically uh, yeah. half of those are as a result of seat belt. So we, I'm a seat belt or seat, uh, car seat. We still got a problem that has, has to be worked on. Second is drowning. Drowning is, is the second leading cause of death from kids and the, and the, the greatest danger is one to four. Mm -hmm. One to four. As a result of that, state has has been asked to put in place some stronger legislation about uh, barriers around swimming pools and uh, the department association tells me that they're going to be uh, they're putting forth legislation or sponsoring and helping with it to put legislation around anything that's a public place that has a barrier and any private new pool that's built after this law is put in place, which if it does be put in place this coming year, going for <coughs> next year or September, whichever, and that they would have to have a barrier put up, which is in, important. Uh, homicides, number three, homicides. And we, our city has had our share. Uh, the, last, the next to last is suicides. Suicides, you wouldn't think, you know, can you imagine? Suicide deaths among kids <coughs> come because boyfriend girlfriend break up. Okay? And then there's a game that they play that some of them play called the blackout game. The blackout game is you, they cut their hair off and it enhances it enhances their dream or enhances their, their this euphoria that just that comes just before death and they, they try to have a safety release and a lot of times that safety release doesn't come. Or they think that just be leaning on the belt hanging from a bar that I'll be able to straighten back up when that comes and, and, it, and it doesn't come. The last group uh, is uh, sleep related deaths. Sleep related deaths, 62 percent of sleep related deaths come from the baby being in an adult bed. And being on this one, whenever my kids have had their children, I have, I have given them a lecture. I mean, I've been, <laughs> man, I have been all over them. You don't do that. 
and it seems like such a natural, cuddling, loving thing, but just simply the baby laying there and the and the adult putting, matter of fact, one of them, the adult just put their hand on the chest just to make sure they can check on the baby. And they go to sleep and just the weight of their hand on the chest knocked off enough air to cause a problem. A mother rolling over, or the baby being between, and mother or dad rolling over, and they roll over on the child, and they don't, it doesn't take but just a very short time, and the child doesn't fuss or doesn't kick or doesn't mm -hmm. try. Those things, they're just, they're hard, you know, hard to think about. But this group, again, in our, I mean, let me, uh, San Angelo, Texas, I know you're interested. Mm -hmm. San Angelo, Texas, the number one cause of death in our community is medical or hereditary type of problems. They, that seems to be the number one. Uh, they die of some congenital problem either right after birth, during birth or right after birth very quick. That would include SIDS a little bit, but, but uh, these are more what we would say, the, med the doctor would say, not this wasn't preventable. It was something that was going to happen because. Second, motor vehicle crashes. Third is uh, child abuse. The fourth would include the other, suicide, drowning, and sleep-related uh, deaths. We had a couple of deaths due to furniture falling, as I said a while ago, and that prompted us to do uh, the video. Houston had a problem uh, with kids drowning in a five-gallon bucket because people were putting buckets out to catch the rainwater and the little kids go around and they're playing and they fall into the bucket and they can't get it. They don't have the strength to pull themselves out. Other places had child abuse uh, and they've done videos on those. Some places have had uh, uh, oh, the, other one. the drowning. And they, they have done surveys and things and, and tried to come up with ways. But the legislature does work and the legislature does listen. And the good thing about this group and the state group, it costs the state zero. It's entirely voluntary. So it's a good program and it does a lot of good. It's very quiet and you don't hear anything about it because we all sign every time a confidentiality agreement and that confidentiality agreement then it, it, all the paperwork is taken up. Anything that would have any documents or, or related to the child, they're all destroyed and, and uh, nobody knows. It, it is very interesting though to see these people work and to see the tragedy in their eyes as they think about these kids and the deaths that, that some of our kids go through. Anybody have a question about any of that? Yes, sir. How often do y'all meet? And also, you said there were 74 <coughs> different chapters or? 74 different, uh, different child fatality review teams right. in the state, and they cover about 94% of the state. Do you, does, do y'all just cover the local? We have come, we cover the Concho Valley, 13 okay. counties. Okay. But on how often do you meet? We meet whenever we have at least five. Okay. We, we don't meet unless we have five deaths. Usually it's between five and 12. It's hard to get through in an hour, uh, much over five. Sometimes it, if they're medical, if they're a bunch of them are medical, it's pretty easy uh, to, to do that because the doc just gives us that information. It's pretty easy to understand. And the doc tells you nothing you can do about it. Something that was congenital and go on. If it's a car wreck, sometimes it, it gets entailed. If it's abuse, sometimes it really gets entailed because you have a lot of folks who need to give information and talk about it to see what what could be what could be done. Yes, sir. I noticed you mentioned anything about the you know the heat in cars and child slept in cars. Is, is it going down? It's tragic, it's not, it doesn't, the numbers don't rise to that level. Uh, people break windows, people don't stand, I mean, 
if, if that is noticed, people do something about that and, and they're able to keep, I guess, keep the numbers down. But it's, it's not one that we see very often and it doesn't appear on the state report very often. Even though you hear about them, they're all very public when they happen, but not, uh, not very often. Anybody else? Yes, sir. You mentioned several different types of professionals involved. I didn't hear you mention of a counselor or clergy. Are they involved or are they not there's, actually important? There's not a there's not a uh, not a clergy involved in the determination of the death. Uh, how many of you've ever heard compa heard of compassionate friends? Mm -hmm. Okay, some of you have. Compassionate friends is a group here in town that ministers to those families who have lost a child, and where that comes in, they go to that family. They try to get that family and do as much as they can to pull that family into their organization. And some of these people, I spoke at it two years ago on their Christmas uh, remembrance uh, program, and I, I don't know, probably a third or a fourth, uh, a third or more of the people who were there, those families, I had some kind of dealings with because either, either through the child being in court or we had the death. And a lot of them would come up and say, you know, Judge Buck or Judge McGuire or somebody uh, would, they'll come up and say that, that we were a part of their life. But as far as on the team itself, no. But we do try to encourage that and we have a member of Compassionate Friends on the team to follow up with those folks.